Hi guys, welcome to this instructional video for Aspire Test Prep's Absolute Value Worksheet in our free SAT math curriculum. Aspire Test Prep offers online SAT ACT tutoring for high school students and test prep classes for high schools. You can find more information at www.aspiretestprep.com and if you haven't already, you can take advantage of our free SAT math curriculum. Starting with question number one, Question number one says, which of the following expressions is equal to zero for some value of x? Well, the idea here is that an absolute value expression, which has these symbols, will make something positive. For instance, the absolute value of 5 is 5 because it's already positive, so nothing gets done to it. But the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. So if a number is positive, absolute value leaves it alone. If a number is negative, absolute value makes it positive. If a number is equal to zero, then absolute value does nothing to it. So the result of an absolute value operation will either be a positive number or zero. The smallest thing that an absolute value can be equal to is zero. So if we're looking for the smallest possible answer, we can imagine that this entire thing in choice A is zero. So zero plus zero is zero. 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 plus 3 is 3. So which of these can possibly be equal to 0? A, because what we just did is we tested out the smallest possible outcome for each of these choices. Looking at number 2, which of these expressions is equal to negative 3 for some value of x? Well, if the smallest thing for any of these green pieces is zero, the smallest thing that any of these could total out to, then we'd have zero minus two, negative two, zero minus one, zero minus three, negative three, and zero plus zero, zero. So the one that has the potential to be equal to negative three is choice C. Number three, which of the following expressions is less than negative eight for exactly three integer values of x? Well, the easiest one is if the absolute values themselves are equal to zero, like we said before, then we'd have choice A could be equal to negative 10, B can be negative 11, C can be negative 3, and D can be negative 9. But now we need to test out other values. Which of these can equal negative 9? Well, for these to equal negative 9, for choice A, we would need the absolute value itself to be equal to 1, right? So if this entire thing equaled 1, 1 minus 10 is negative 9. So could we get negative 9? Let's see. Let's test that out. The absolute value of x minus 9 equals 1. Now when you have an absolute value equation, it breaks into two scenarios. x minus 9 equals 1. x minus 9 equals negative 1. Now the reason for that is, like I said before, the absolute value of 5 is 5, but the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. So if I were to get 5 as my answer for something, I wouldn't know whether the input were positive or negative. So right here we had an absolute value equals 1, and so we don't know whether what went into the absolute value was positive or negative. That's why when you have an absolute value equation, you set it equal to both the positive and the negative outcome. So solving both of these, add 9 to both sides here, we get x equals 10. Add 9 to both sides here, we get x equals 8. So in other words, for choice A, there are two values that give us negative 9. Uh, this one we could say comes from putting x equal to 10, and this one comes from putting x equal to 8. So now we see that there are, there are so far three, three integer values of x that give us numbers that are less than negative 8. If we did the same thing with choice B, we could find two numbers that give us negative 10, two x values that give us negative 10, and we could find two x values that give us negative 9. So for this one, there are five integer values. C, okay, so we just talked about why B is wrong, because there are not exactly three integer values that do what we want, but five. For C, there's no number that gets us anything close to negative 8. The smallest value is negative 3. And for D, the smallest value is negative 9. 
um, and that's the only value. We could get it equal to negative 8, but we don't want it to be equal to negative 8. We want it to be less than negative 8. So the one that works is choice A. Going to the next question, for what value of B is absolute value B minus 1 minus 2 equal to 0? This one's nice and easy to solve. All we have to do is go ahead and do what the problem says, which is set it equal to 0. Add 2 to both sides. And now we're at that point where we have an absolute value equation. When you've isolated the absolute value like we just did, you have to go ahead and break it into two sides. B minus 1 equals 2. B minus 1 equals negative 2. So on the left-hand side, adding 1 to both sides gives us B equals 3. On the right, adding 1 to both sides gives us B equals minus 1. So for what value of B is this equal to 0? There are two values, and 3 is one of the values that would do that. Number 5. For what value of A is this expression here equal to 0? So let's set it equal to 0. The first step is to take away 3 from both sides, and you get that absolute value equals negative 3. And here, a red flag goes off. The answer here is no solution. Why is that? Because as we've been saying the whole time, an absolute value expression can only be equal to a positive number or 0. Here, we have an absolute value equal to a negative number, and that is not allowed. An absolute value would never create a negative number. So the answer here is, there's no value of x that does this. Number six, for what value of a is this expression here equal to zero? Absolute value a minus four minus five, excuse me, equals zero. So we set it equal to zero. Add five to both sides. And once again, we have the absolute value equal to some number. To solve that, you go ahead and do the two situations. a minus 4 equals 5. a minus 4 equals minus 5. And you add 4 to both sides. And once again, you add 4 to both sides for the other equation. And we have two numbers that would cause this expression to equal 0. a equals 9 and a equals minus 1. And 9 is given to us as an answer. Moving along to question 7, the function is defined by this expression, f of b equals f of 0, and b is greater than 0. What's the value of b? Okay, the big deal here is this expression, f of b equals f of 0. What is this really saying to us? Well, b is some x value. And what's being said is that there's some x value that gives the same answer as when x equals 0. So to go step by step here, we need to find out what happens when x equals 0. So first we just basically plug in 0. Absolute value 0 minus 3 minus 4 like that. And this thing here becomes negative 3 on the inside, minus 4. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, minus 4 equals negative 1. So what we just determined is when you plug in 0, you get negative 1 is your answer. So back to this expression we started with in red, there's some x value that gives us that same answer as when x equals 0. What is that answer? Negative 1. So we need to actually take our original expression and set the whole thing equal to negative 1. Adding 4 to both sides. And once again, we have our situation where we have an absolute value equal to a number, and that number is positive, so so far it seems to be working. And we can just solve by saying b minus 3 equals 3, b minus 3 equals negative 3, and solve both of them. b equals 6, b equals 0, and so we have 6 and 0 as the two values of b that give us the same answer as when, as when b equals 0. 
So 6 and 0. And 6 is being given to us as an answer, and we're done. Number 8. This function is defined by g of x equals absolute value x minus 8 minus 11. g of x equals g of 5. What's a possible value of x? Well, there's some value of x that gives us the same answer as when x is 5. So what is that answer? Let's find out. Let's plug in x equals 5, absolute value 5 minus 8 minus 11, um, absolute value of negative 3 minus 11. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and the answer is negative 8. So there's some value that's going to give us the same answer as we got when g was 5, when x was 5, which is negative 8. So how do we find what that answer is? We set the whole thing equal to negative 8. Add 11 to both sides. And we have an absolute value equal to a number, which is the point where we have to go ahead and separate it into two sides. x minus 8 equals 3. x minus 8 equals negative 3. And go ahead and solve each of these. x equals 11. x equals 5. So 11 and 5 are our two answers. We already knew about the 5 from the very beginning right here. But we also know now that x equals 11 is one of the answers, and that's choice D. Number nine, we have a function defined by h of a is absolute value a plus 5 minus 10. h of a equals a of 2. In other words, there's some x value, which we're going to call a, which gives us the same answer as when a equals 2. So let's plug in a equals 2 and find out what that answer is. So this is the absolute value of 2 plus 5, which is 7. So absolute value of 7 is just 7. And we have 7 minus 10, which is negative 3. So now there's some x value or a value that gives us that same answer, negative 3. So let's set the whole thing equal to negative 3 and find out what value of a does that. Add 10 to both sides. Break it into two scenarios. A plus 5 equals 7. A plus 5 equals negative 7. Take away 5 from both sides. A equals 2. Take away 5 from both sides. And A equals minus 12. So in addition to the 2, which we already knew about, we also now know that minus 12 would have worked. Now that's the end of our worksheet. Thanks for listening to Aspire Test Prep's solutions on our absolute value free worksheet. This is from our free SAT curriculum that you can find at www.aspiretestprep.com. If you like what we're doing, recommend our online tutoring or our test prep classes to your friends and to your high school. Feel free to reach out with any questions at all. You can email me at alex at aspiretestprep.com.